You've said before, when trying to animate something for a quantum video, something is going to be wrong about it. Yep. You can't actually make it correct because we can't see it. I don't think that we should be trying to come up with pictures. This is abstract mathematics. Right. But I got to give the people what they want. Why do these people <laughs> demand pictures? <laughs> What do you know about quantum spin? Quantum spin. It is a quantum property. Oh, man. It's got to be different for reasons amongst <laughs> different particles. I don't know. I think that's about it. So not much, no, I'm gathering. No. Oh, something about fermions. Yes. That? Yeah? Yes. We'll get to that later. Okay. Even by the end of the 1920s, early 30s, this new quantum field theory starts to develop where particles weren't really particles. They were just, you know, excitations in quantum fields, right? Might not even be there at all. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. That's not what it is at all, but it feels like that sometimes. Which we have another conversation video about. I don't even remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we call them fields is because they are properties or values assigned to points in space. So, for example, if you have a spin zero particle, you would have something we refer to as a scalar. Uh -huh. Plain old number attached to every point in space. Okay. It's like the most basic quantum field you can make. Something like a photon is a spin one particle. In order to describe photons using quantum fields, you assign a vector to every point in space, an arrow. Okay. Don't think about it too much. Uh -huh. Your brain will melt. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm already starting to, like, shove yeah. it back in. For something like a spin two particle, we would assign a matrix or something. Things get more complicated. An extra dimension. Yeah. Spin one half particles are tricky. They are described by something called a spinner. I have never heard of a spinner. Most people don't hear about it. It's not something that comes up in like the pop psi. You don't talk about spinners. It's a very mathematical thing. Okay. But something like an electron, which is a spin one half particle, mm -hmm. its field would be made up of spinners. A spinner for every point in space. Yes, exactly. Okay. I'm going to attempt to make it more tangible today, and we're going to see where it does and doesn't work. Sure. We're, we're going to use gears like this, and I'll, I'll have a better graphic on the screen, but what I want you to imagine is that the yellow gear is physical space. This is how a particle is oriented in real, actual space. If we could actually see it and it was a ball, it's not, but if we could actually see it and it was a ball, this would be its orientation. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. The larger gear is what we would call the state space. Okay. It is the quantum spin state of the particle. Those two things are connected, just like these gears are connected. So is that like it's plus or minus? We're only worried about the the one, the general one half. Okay, so this okay. is telling us it's one half. Just an analogy. Yeah. But we're looking at a spin one half particle here. It has physical space mm -hmm. and a spin state. Two different things that are connected to each other. It has an orientation telling us where it is in the universe. Yes. And that's the physical location. Right. And then it has another, what did you call it? The quantum spin state. State. It has another state that is how the spin is oriented. Okay. How, it, how the spin is oriented in an abstract quantum space. Mm -hmm. Not the real space. Mm -mm. Mathematical space. Yep. And I'm going to just take this one electron and I'm going to rotate it around 360 degrees. Now we can take a look at the state space, the mm -hmm. spin state. Is it the same as it was before? No. No, it's not. It's opposite. There appears to be a little more rotational freedom within this spin state space. Now, if I rotate it around another 360 degrees, we get back to where we started. Mm -hmm. We have to go around 720 degrees before it gets back. Okay. It's a circle with 720 degrees in it. Interesting. This is an analogy, right? It's something that takes one aspect of a spinner and shows it visually. It doesn't show them all. There's no way for us to, like, operate with gears, mm -hmm. right? We can't extend this and be like, oh, it's just gears. It's <laughs> gears all the way down. Gears all the way down. It doesn't work that way. Uh -huh. Steampunk okay? has finally had its moment. <laughs> So I have another analogy for you. Okay. And this one was actually developed by Paul Dirac. It's called the Dirac belt trick. Oh, all right. Forget about particles for a second. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is I want you to hold this end of the belt. Mm -hmm. We talked about the gear having to rotate 720 degrees to get back to where it started. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to rotate it 180, 360, 720. Okay. okay. Yeah. So now we have a belt that is twisted 720 degrees. Okay. And I want to show you that this is the same thing 
as the way we started. Okay. And so I'm not going to change the orientations of the two ends. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go like this. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! And so it is the same. Beautiful. Okay. That's exciting. Right. The belt had two ends, mm -hmm. right? Imagine you've got that cube as an electron, and the cube is rotating, and it's connected to the grander universe with a Dirac belt. Okay. On each of its sides. Uh-huh. As this thing rotates, you expect it to get all twisted up. You do. But it doesn't. I kind of hate that it doesn't. Right. <laughs> it's confusing. But again, it's just an analogy, so it mm. kind of falls short. Sure. You've said before, when trying to animate something for a quantum video, something is going to be wrong about it. Yep. You can't actually make it correct because we can't see it. Making an illustration of it is then applying properties to it that don't exist. I don't think that we should be trying to come up with pictures. This is abstract mathematics. Right. But that certainly doesn't stop other people from trying. And you, frankly. And me. Well, I mean, I have to make a living. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I got to give the people what they want. <laughs> people demand pictures. <laughs> people demand pictures. And so I've got to try. But then I have to like also make sure that I say, well, uh, kind of works for these couple of things about it. Yeah. And then this other picture kind of works for these other things about it. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the best we can do. Mm -hmm. You can kind of think of spin as describing the way that a particle is connected to the universe as a whole. Okay. And I mean, that's what the analogies were telling us. For the gears, a 720 degree rotation in physical space always corresponded to a 360 degree rotation in the quantum state space. Right. And for the belt, 720 degrees worth of twists was equivalent to the starting state of the belt. And when we use multiple belts, we can see that connection. And so essentially, quantum spin tells us what that connection looks like. Spin one-half particles are connected to the universe differently than spin one particles. Sure. And so we end up with two major categories of particles. Mm -hmm. We end up with fermions. Which are spin one half. Spin one half and spin three halves and spin five halves and, and seven halves and nine halves. All the, all the halvesies. Then we have the other category, which are the bosons. And they are spin zero, spin one, spin two, spin three, and so on. The integers. The integers. And something we've noticed is that the halvesies particles, the fermions, behave in different ways. Like, they obey different statistics. That, it makes sense. Well, if the spin is how it's connected to the universe, obviously right. the halvesy ones are going to be connected differently than the holes. Which is going to affect the way they behave. Right. Sure. This relationship that spin has with statistics, mm -hmm. we aptly named the spin statistics theorem. I am comfortable with that name. Yes. Creative. Right. Unfortunately, we don't have a proof for it. So they're just hypothetical? Uh, no, we see it. Experimental. We see it experimentally. But you haven't figured it out theoretically. Right. Okay. We don't have a theoretical proof okay. for it. We have experimental evidence, uh, the piles of it, right? Piles of it, yeah. Everyone is like, that. the, the theorem is right. Mm -hmm. Because the universe is telling us so. Yeah. But we can't figure out exactly why theoretically. I think Wolfgang Pauli had the most realistic perspective. We use it because it works. Succinct. Right. <laughs> Straight to the point. Yes. I like it. Did we make it to the end? <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> How's your brain doing? You know, I think that it's mostly still intact. I think I made it. Okay, that's great. That's yeah. great. Miraculously. But uh, until next time, remember. It's okay to be a little crazy. <laughs> Aren't neutron stars more dense than white dwarfs? Yes, they are, but fun fact, neutron stars are also made of degenerate matter. It's a wide category. Anyway, thanks for watching.